one mark of the imperial system. Hi friends, I'm LJ Joyce, and welcome back to Bill's Driver Show. Greetings, everyone. Welcome back to On Air with Jarvis, the podcast of all things Warhammer and general stuff I find of interest. Join me this week is the Creepasta chef and podcaster himself, Idiotic Synergy. How's it going, good sir? It's going all right. Thanks for letting me on this show. Yeah, no problem, man. So, uh, as the introduction may suggest, Synergy here has is not only a creepasta narrator, but also a podcaster of his own Warhammer show called Idiotic Ramble. And I got asked, what got you into doing both kinds of content for your channel? Uh, uh, well, the Idiotic Ramble is sort of on a pause because my editor is probably really busy with real life stuff. So that's on hold. And the creepypasta... A uh, thing that I do with the channel is well, I've always done creep pasta. Idiotic synergy is not my first channel, hmm. so yeah, I've always done creep pasta. But yeah, I don't know. I just thought it was something interesting I could do. Yeah, I- I'm not that good at either one, but hmm. I'm decent. I think I'm sort of taking a break for a while. Yeah, I can understand that. Like, I had to take a break from my own channel because there's only so much you can do before you're like, okay, I have to step back and recharge, you know? Yeah. Well, I... I don't really... Oh, sorry, go on. Oh, uh, I was about to say, I don't really have any plans on coming back. I'm sort of focusing on, like, uh, in real life stuff at the minute. Like, Mm. right like poetry and stuff because I also write a little bit of poetry every now and then. Oh, now that sounds actually pretty cool. What kind of poems do you write? Uh, they're weird. Um, they're not poems I write are usually dark or comedic or very, very sad. <laughs> <laughs> I I kind of like that kind of stuff, but, yeah. uh, I actually have an interesting history with creepy passes as whenever I'm painting models, I would listen to like say chilling tales for dark nights, listen to stories like scarecrow corpse, all that kind of stuff. I, yeah. I got asked, uh, do you do stuff like that? Like listen to creepy passive channels as you're painting or what kind of stuff do you like to uh, listen to? When I'm painting Warhammer, I tend to like listening to, to like, uh, well, mixture of mixture of like audio books, uh, whether it be like Warhammer ones or other books like Heart of Darkness or Crime and Punishment or or Animal Farm or Of My Cement. You know, like I really like audio books. Uh, one of my favorite ones is The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. That one's really funny. Um, but, but I also like. Like listening to the Warhammer uh, sort of law channels as well, whether that be Adeptus Ridiculous or Voldemort. And I think Voldemort's my personal favorite. He really does make um, these sort of lore videos very interesting because he does like these little story segments and the way he presents himself really reminds me. Oh yeah, the uh, the way he presents himself is really much like a Black Library narrator. It's very good stuff. Yeah, I, I my personal favorite one's the Night Lord one. Hmm. I haven't because it's just really creepy. <laughs> I haven't it's just really creepy that story. I haven't checked that one out yet, but I've been. But I think my favorite that he has done so far would be the Death Corps of Krieg because of how he brought like so many Warhammer channels into working on this little project of his, and it, it turned out very excellent indeed. Yeah, I I like that one too. Voldemort is very good at like writing stories and narrating them, and yeah, he's just cool. Go subscribe to Voldemort. Forget, <laughs> forget this. Subscribe to Voldemort, and uh, maybe subscribe <laughs> to me if you have the time. <laughs> yes, and subscribe. Sorry, I have to say this. Otherwise, Jarvis will hit me in the face again. <laughs> uh, no, I, no, Jarvis. I won't. No, I didn't say that. He's that's fake news. So you you have to just travel overseas. 
go to England of all places. <laughs> Though, actually, speaking of which, I mentioned this plenty of times, but I'm actually saving up for a trip to England because there are plenty of places. Oh, you full sword. Oh, come on. It's like there's plenty of places I want to visit. And of course, there's Warhammer World. It's at least a place I want to visit at least once, you know? Like Stonehenge. Stonehenge. Yeah. Stonehenge. It's just a neighbor with like a really stony edge. You come near my head, Sonny. <laughs> oh, like that. Oh, like there's... like the old man from uh, Hot Fuzz, you know? <laughs> it's... Yeah. That's pretty much how most of the people in England speak, though. It depends where you go. Very orcish. Might need a basically. translator. Very orcish, maybe. <laughs> if, you, if you go to London, wear a stamp vest. <laughs> It's literally just, I'm going to go to London. Here's your stamp vest and sprint, run, go, flee. London is effectively a mega city from Judge Dredd if there was no judges. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, I bet maybe like in London, uh, I think they're going to have like, a, what, tourist spots for the famous knife stabber himself, uh, Jack the Ripper. <laughs> so, like, and over here, this is where Jack killed the next victim. <laughs> Uh, meanwhile, there's like five stabbings happening all at once that mm. put Jack Ripper to shame. It's like, oh, okay. Yay, London. There's some parts of England that's quite nice. I, like, more of the rural uh, areas are very nice. Uh, the history that England has is also very cool if you're into history, uh, depending who you ask. Uh, it's England's got. Well, say England, what I really mean is like the entirety of the UK has got some very nice history to it. Yeah, it truly really does. Again, oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, I was just going to say, but then again, that goes for every place. Oh, yeah, of course. It definitely applies to here as well. Now, speaking of Death Corps of Krieg, actually, a few weeks ago, from the time we were, by the time this podcast is up, Games Workshop has revealed some new Death Corps of Krieg models. And I'll post a picture up here on the Discord to. Ah, uh, yes. And here's. I, the... I really liked these models. They're so cool. But you can easily convert them to be Armageddon Steel Legion as well. And what's crazy is that people have always talked about there could be new Krieger models, yet it's something that, like, a hopeful wish, basically. But the fact that Games Workshop has finally done so. And the fact that how a few weeks earlier we got like the Tanith as a box of models and we got upgrade Cadians, I think this is going to be a good year for Guardsmen. Balls I think. Ghosts. Yeah. Yeah. I want Mordy and Iron Guard to be updated. That's all I want is just some Mordy and Iron Guard models. I love the Mordy and Iron Guard. I think they're, they're just everything about them is so over the top. It's like it isn't depressing as Krieg. It isn't as well known as Cadia. It isn't as as like you know bombastic as Atachin. The Mordi and Iron Guard only have one mission, and that is to look as fabulous as possible. <laughs> they do have a fun little uniform color, fun little uniform theme going on. It's like that press fit, fancy upper class look, you could say, or like. These were these are the kind of soldiers that we will guard, like special museums, stuff like that, stuff that we see in real life. Yeah, yeah they're sort of based on uh, soldiers, sort of based on the Royal Anglian uh, Regiment over here. Really, sort of how they uniform. Um, it's just parallels that you can see between the Mordian Iron Guard uniform and the Royal Anglian Regiment. Though I could be wrong. I don't quote me on that. Though I could be very, very wrong. They sort of remind me of Queen's Guard a little bit. Yeah, speaking of Queen's Guard, I remember this one Guardsman Regiment, the Fistrolians. When I saw them for the first time, I, my initial thought was them being the Queen's Guard because of the fancy hats and so forth. Until I would layer, you know. Oh, do you mean the? Do you mean the guys that wear like the? Oh, bloody hell! I. The, uh, I, just, I need to see. What, I can't remember the, what the Fistrolians look like. I'm, I'm probably getting them confused with the Zulu-looking ones. You know, the ones with like the hat 
hats and the red coats and no that that's them they have the red coats oh, they have oh. the hats going on but when i was looking into it they were it was says that these guys are more slavic like the nobil russian nobility of the white army you could say not maybe not white army but they're more like the russian empire sort of look to it oh yeah i'll get what you mean now yeah yeah, especially for guardsmen like from the Kriegers, they definitely do have that World War One vibe, and you don't really see stuff like that often. And of how Games Workshop have designed these guys, like a combination between French troops, German, English, it makes them very distinctive and yeah. something really cool looking. Yeah, I when you first mentioned the story in uh, Firstborn. Rain immediately went to Praetorian Guard, which are based on uh, the old Sulu soldiers. Oh, really? For some reason. Yes, hmm. hang on. Have you not seen the Praetorian Guards before? Praetorian. They sound familiar. I don't think so. Um, can you send a picture Post on the a Discord? Picture. <laughs> oh, yeah, these guys. They, they remind me of the, yeah, it does. the English troops of the Zulu. Yeah, they remind me of that. Yeah. Yes. You think these guys will get plastic sometime? <laughs> oh, I, I hope so. Or you could or you could combine them with the Mordian Iron Guard so that the Praetorians act like a uh, Tempestus Scions or the Mordian Iron Guard. That would be kind of cool to see them two combined because both of them have fabulous dress sense is how I would describe it. <laughs> Something like something like it's a box of Iron Guard, but you can also assemble them to be the Praetorians. The option. Oh, that be that would nice combination of both. That would be cool. I also for shits and giggles. Uh, my apologies. I had to get one swear. Ah, <laughs> uh, no, no problem, man. I'm not going. Um, it's okay. Uh, basically, I I want them to introduce Laslocks. In, in 40k. Um, do you know about Laslocks? They're one of my favorite ideas. They're one of my favorite guns in the entirety of 40k. Unfortunately, I don't know for some reason. Okay, right. Laslocks are like old muskets that fires like a supercharged version of a Lasgun shot. Oh yeah, I think I remember this. It's like They're the early so version of cool. Lasgun. Yeah, they're so cool, but unfortunately, you can't use them. But I kind of want to bring an entire army where everybody's armed with Laslocks, because then it would it would fit the Mordian Iron Guard and the Praetorian Guards really well if everyone had muskets instead of, you know... The last gun, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, you could easily recreate, like, a command squad that resembles Sharp, hmm. if you've ever watched Sharp. That's, have you ever seen Sharp? As uh, stars Sean Bean. Uh, no, I haven't seen it, but I do know the movie Zulu, so that's something that will also be famed for the Praetorians. Yes. Uh, Sharp is basically set during the French, as well, the French Napoleonic War and the Spanish Civil War. Uh, it's been a long while since I've seen Sharp, but basically. Uh, it's just a TV series where Sean Bean gets the shit kicked out of him, mm. and he kicks some guy in the knackers, and then it ends. That's mm. that's how every fight in in Sharp goes. Sean Bean's about to die. Oh wait, Sean Bean headbutts a guy and kicks him in the knackers and stabs him with a sword. Yeah, it's, it's rather dumb. Why well, do it's not rather dumb and silly? Why well, do not have this other? Napoleonic War movie. It has Russell Crowe in it. He's in command of an English ship and taking out some Napoleonic ships. I don't know what it's called, but I do have some some knowledge on like that kind of movies. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I I do, but I don't really have any knowledge on movies like that because I watched movies like that when I was younger. Oh, yeah. I don't really have a memory that good of memory, but I just remember Sharp because it's more memorable. Like just because it's Sean Bean about to die in every episode or nearly every episode, 
but he wins just by punching some guy in the bollocks. Also, there's a guy in it. Uh, his name. There's a guy in it. I forgot the guy's name, but he just goes, Ah, Sharpie, I'm going to see your wife, Sharpie. Yes, well, Sharpie. Rah. He's like the most over the top British man ever known to <laughs> TV. It's so dumb. <laughs> I'll have to give that a little watch sometime. I'm pretty sure I can find something like that on YouTube. Though, yeah, yeah, you probably could. Though I do I have watched like plenty of English shows before. Like I've watched my few episodes of The Flying Circus, but I think probably the best show that I've watched was Father Ted. Have you seen that? Yes, I I like Father Ted. I hear you're a racist now, Father. <laughs> it's so good. So we, so we all be racist now, Father? No. Uh, there's there's another one uh, called the IT Crowd. If you've ever seen that? Oh, no, I haven't seen it. Was it? Uh, basically, um, three nerds run an IT department. One of them's uh, a guy called Roy. He's oh an yes, I, I know this. I know yes, this. That's the IT crowd, and it's the funniest thing known to man. I my favorite character is a guy called Renum. Hmm. <laughs> uh, not Renum, Renum's son, <laughs> and his introduction is at his dad's funeral, where he kicks in the church doors and just screams, "Father!" And then just start sprinting towards the coffin. <laughs> As- <laughs> just Baba. <laughs> yeah, I remember watching this clip on that show where I don't know the the character's name, but I know that one of them is Roy. And they're outside the building. They see like a bomb droid trying to f- oh, defuse yes. the bomb. The guy thinks it's a wild <laughs> bot. <laughs> and it's, it's like, can we keep it, Roy? <laughs> Moss, Moss is like, can we keep it, Roy? Uh, what system does your computer use? <laughs> Vista. We're going to die, Roy. We're going to die. <laughs> yeah, English shows are pretty great to watch and much better than the stuff we have here because we have the Big Bang Theory. I'm not sure if you ever watched an episode. Oh, uh, yes. The, the Big Bang Theory starring Sheldon. And the others. <laughs> I forgot the names. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. I will say, uh, it is bloody boiling in, in here. Like, I'm filming this in my room, and I can't have the windows open because the neighbours are outside. <laughs> so I've just got this one wonky-ass fan in front of me. And, it, and yeah, it's just awful. It's like, eh, I can't get cool. It's just really warm. It's twenty-eight degree, uh, 26 to 28 degrees in here. Oh, no, I'm sorry about that. I know. And it isn't Fahrenheit either. It's the yeah, actual Celsius, decent yeah. weight measured temperature. Yeah, bloody Fahrenheit. Yeah, I follow the Dude, metric system. What Fahrenheit is this? A hundred? Is a hundred hot or not? I don't know. It's Fahrenheit. What? Mm. <laughs> this podcast is brought to you by people who really hate Fahrenheit. By people <laughs> who not... use the correct method of doing math. So, ah, uh, Fahrenheit. Uh. Though, in- <laughs> though, interestingly, over here is kind of interesting of how we do math because. In the automotive industry, we actually use both imperial and metric because the metric the, the metric system for PSI is KPA, if I'm correct. I don't know. Oh, well, anyway, so <laughs> when I was in the automotive industry, we do something like, okay, fill up these tires to 35 PSI, but the metric version of PSI is this measurement. And it's like, well, almost nobody I know uses that. We use PSI, even though that's imperial. We use the other one. <laughs> yes. Just use whatever you're comfortable with. It does the same thing effectively. Though there is a certain point where it's like you don't say it's this many inches when you're doing brakes. It's more like it's this many millimeters because that's more accurate than inches can be. Yeah. Yeah. The math system is <laughs> messed up here. I- I'm just lucky I've got a C in maths. That's that's all I know from maths is I got a C in maths. Hmm. 
I've got a B in English and an A in history, and I've got a degree in stuff. <laughs> Though, if I may also ask, Games during the same time that this episode's it's up, Games Workshop also reveals some plenty of orc stuff. So, will you mind me sending you a few pictures of stuff I found? No, I do not mind because I like orcs. Though, one question that springs to mind: Will Mad Doc Grodznik get an update? Well, considering that, maybe the next edition. Look at the, you, but look at like the new pain boys. They're huge. They're well, like big, chunky pain boys. Meanwhile, you got Mad Doc Grosnick, who's like just a little tiny man, little tiny orc. Well, technically, it's not a pain boy; it's a pain boss. The boss version I, of what well, would be the pain boy. But, well, you can't. Well, here's another thing that annoys me: Mad Dog Grosnick is not a HQ choice. Oh, he's not. Oh, no, he's an elite. So, you can't run him as a HQ choice, which pisses me off to no end. Because every other faction now has a has their clan's respective HQ choice. A named character that's a HQ choice, like the Snake Bites guy, and the. Is there a new clan coming? I can't remember. Or is it. Well, well what's going yeah. on right now is that it's the Snake Bites clan who have been given, you know, a whole range of plastic models, the same way how the Speed Freaks were given models a few years ago. Yes. That's actually quite interesting how. Um, what's his name? The pain boss, the pain boy you were talking about. Uh, Mad Doc Grosnick. Yeah, Grosnick. Uh, Death Skulls. Yes, Death Skulls. Orc. He also was the one that brought uh, Gaz Gulfracker alive back to life, not once, but twice but now. Twice. Yeah, he Frankenstein him back to life. Twice. I may have That's twice. That's so act- why hasn't. Doc Grosnick got an update. That's actually pretty weird how he's a named character, but not a HQ option. He's an elite. That's something I don't think I've heard before. It's, it's, it's almost annoying. It's almost as if they would take like Calgar and make him an elite character. It's like, but wait, he's not a unit. He's a character. So wouldn't he be an HQ? Yeah, I don't know. They, they, I understand some Space Marines have named characters that are also elite. But, ah, oh God. I, it annoys me because I like Mad Doc Grosnick. I think he's the most interesting out of all the orcs. Mm-hmm. I know that's, like, weird for me to say, but Mad Doc Grosnick is probably the best orc, in my opinion. Though, let's also consider that not every single Necron character got a new model because... Of so far, we got the Silent King and Zarek. I think that's how his named the guy of the spire legs, making like human soup. Yes. Yeah, he was the last model of Psychic Awakenings. Yes. Though, uh, here's an orc model that I want to get your opinions on. He's a pretty big boy. I like him. I like him. And what's really cool is I've been told this is almost the Bane Blade variant or Blame. What we would see as a bane blade for this army, and I like it. I I like the big squig. I really like the huge chunky squig. And in an old video <laughs> I did, I kind of I had a original in in a video I did. I had a piece where I was going to say maybe there will be a tank variant of these like squig hog things, and the fact that there is a squig hog tank variant, kind of like what we see here, it's yes. really cool. And I like the, uh... It is very cool. Look at his little face! I I meant... You know what? If I was a guardsman and I was going to die regardless, I would have to give that guy a head pat. Like, yes. He's chunky boy. Yeah. How can he respond well to belly rubs? That's, that's an orc squig that loves belly rubs. He probably does, <laughs> and... What I actually like about these sort of squigs here that they did for the snake bites is that they're not just like extra big squigs. They did something more with it. They make them look like these boars almost, kind of like in Warhammer Fantasy. Have you seen uh, the, the white squig? 
Yeah, I have. A it. giant white. That that one looks cool. And I've got so many conversion ideas for it. Yeah, I actually do. You and can, uh, you can easily make it into like some nergly thing or some some chaos thing if you so desire. You could sort of turn it into like a uh I don't know, a juggernaut? Yeah, you could probably turn it into a juggernaut, a corn berserker riding I've forgot the unit, but it's uh Chaos Lord on with Juggernaut, I think. I can't remember. I do apologize. Oh, it's all I don't good. remember every unit off by head. <laughs> I don't remember every unit off by hand. Yeah, I don't either. It's not I don't it's have so that kind many. of thing. Oh dear. Can I um I mention one thing that I found out recently. Oh yeah, what? That really baffles me. Uh, you know how you can bring buildings with you? Yes, I do. Uh, they have leadership. What? Buildings have leadership. So what if does a, if a building fails, they leadership doesn't run? run? Away. Reasonably, they can run away. Okay, I guess, but. Oh. Hang on, I let me show you the wonderful world of the building with leadership ten. It's right. Well, that this sounds- thing has annoyed me. Uh, this thing has annoyed me ever since I saw it. This is a slight deviation, so I do apologize. Oh no, it's actually been quite interesting, as because. Like, it sounds like it's going to be very hard to fail the leadership, but it's like, what's the point? It's, uh, it's called, co- it's the Imperial Fortress Walls. Uh, do you have the a picture? Walls. Do you have a picture of it? Uh, I've got the picture of the rules. Uh, I will soon send you a picture of the wall. <laughs> it baffles me. This shit right here baffles me. Yeah, I think someone at Games Workshop didn't drink their coffee in the morning because I don't, I still, I just don't see the purpose of it. Like, I can see like toughness (laughs) or something like that, but leadership. I just like the idea that it's like strength 10, toughness 10, uh, ballistic skill 4, save is a 2 plus, leadership 10. Yeah, I think somebody didn't really think that much on this because it is bizarre sounding. Bliss of skill for a wall. Away. Bliss of skill yes. for a wall. Ballistic skill for a wall. <laughs> what, does it have guns on it or anything? Uh, yes, it does. It's okay, that makes sense. It's got a twin heavy bolter. Oh, okay. Long barreled auto cannon or a twin las cannon. That's your lot. Okay, that actually does make sense. That has like these torts on the wall. That actually does make sense now. I I don't think I hear much from you from your opinions on stuff like AOS or fantasy. So if I could ask, what is your opinion on those games? Uh, I oh, when I was very young, I used to play Warhammer Fantasy. Oh yeah. Uh, I yeah, I had like an old Skaven army. The flamethrowers, oh, I forgot what the flamethrower units were. It, basically, it was like Skaven with like beer barrels on the back mm-hmm. that just uh, had like flamethrowers attached. They were cool. They were fun and they were just silly. And then, and then all of a sudden, Games Workshop went, hey, let's make the go into end times. Okay. Hey, do you want to play Age of Sigma? Can I still use my Skaven? No, not really. You're going to have to get some new ones, mate. Oh, joy. So glad. I I haven't played Age of Sigma at all. Yeah. I haven't played it, but I used to play Fancy. Yeah, well, I haven't played a game of AOS. Like, I have a small AOS army right now, but. The color scheme's a bit of a mess because I was trying so many different things at once, and so the color scheme is a bit of an eyesore, so I might have to start over, but 
I will say that AOS first edition wasn't the greatest impression ever, but it, what came afterwards more than made up for it. I find like I re- I think the universe is really fascinating, and you can only dislike a first impression for so long, you know. I know. Um, I'll I'll try to get back into it. I just. I don't know. It's like uh, ever since they went, hey, let's just kill off the old lot. Just, that kind of irritated me for for a bit because it was like you had all this potential, mm. but instead of doing like anything else with like the other the other s- bits of the setting you established, instead of making new established settings, you know, like instead of exploring the world you built. In even more, you decided to just kill it off and then only replace it with something slightly less impactful. Mm. Well, I guess the thing for me was that I never was part of Warhammer Fantasy, so I guess maybe that's the reason why I was able to get into AOS probably a lot easier, but I can understand the annoyance that your universe that you liked and put so much money in is suddenly like disappeared. Like I can understand that. I'm just, and hopefully Games Workshop doesn't do that again because <laughs> oh, the backlash was. Age of wasn't. Sigma 2, Electric Boogaloo, or, Age of Sigma 3, this time it's personal. Age of Sigma 4, <laughs> this time with a vengeance. Age of Sigma 5, revengeance. <laughs> or something like, uh, or something like Warhammer Age of Gilliman. <laughs> Warhammer Age of Matt Ward. Matt Ward writes the entirety of Warhammer from scratch. Oh Enjoy! Boy. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, let's redo Mortarian's heart. That was really fun. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm so glad they retconned Mortarian's heart. I am so glad they retconned every story Matt Ward touched. They did? It's like... Yeah, yeah, a lot of the established law that Matt Ward basically uh, screwed over, they retconned it. So, like, the Grey Knights, instead of them having, like, the really stupid, idiotic law they have, they're now just sort of, like, doom... They're sort of, like, doom guys, but tainted by the warp constantly. You, you can read it as that, anyway. Mm. And it's allowed. It's not like Matt Ward put his piss stained hands on it it was like eh. now back on the t- now on the topic of warhammer fantasy you, you probably yes. know you definitely Sorry. know oh no no problem no problem um <laughs> so warhammer fantasy is coming back sometime like probably years from now called warhammer the old world and they've made some hints that there's going to they're going to explore more of the warhammer fantasy world and we said we see this in yes. total war we see we see this more in Total Warhammer three with their with them bringing in the Cathays. And I gotta ask, if they were to bring Cathay to the tabletop, what would you like to see? Uh I've I've never really played Total War three. I've never played Total War Warhammer. Oh, Sorry. Oh, uh I haven't either, but what what but what I find interesting about this is that they're exploring more of the fantasy world, so and they're bringing in a nation that has existed, but we never see like official model as model models for. Like I oh, remember, I see. It's like we. It's like I, I, I on the on Twitter. I saw this really cool like old photo that someone took from a old white dwarf magazine of somebody converting some fantasy models into looking, make them look like some, making it look like what Heath sees as Cathay. Like how their armors would look like, and with them riding these Kirins, the sort of Chinese oh, mythical creature. That it's, does seem good. And that's interesting. And hopefully, they might do something like that for the official malls if they were to do something like that. I I always would like to see more official models, uh, just because most models, especially in like fantasy and Age of Sigma, look amazing. Like the way they're sculpted looks fantastic. I, it's just a shame my painting isn't that good, but you know I can appreciate how they're sculpted. So seeing more models being made is always interesting to me. Oh yeah, definitely. Like 
I have a huge collection of models I still have to get to, but there's definitely just stuff from Fantasy and AOS that I appreciate. Like, I really like the Cruel Boys from AOS and the Bretonians of Fantasy are very cool. Like, I even have their, like, army book. So, Fantasy is something that I will always appreciate, I find. Played Vermintide. Uh, I mean, have you ever played Vermintide? I really tried. Like, I have the game, but because my PlayStation doesn't connect to the internet, I can't play it, so... Oops. Um, I've, I play it offline, like Vermintide 2. It's enjoyable, if repetitive. Sort of like a poor man's left for dead, but it's really fun. And speaking of fantasy, I actually shared a photo of this on Twitter where I actually bought the sixth edition or the sixth edition core rulebook of Warhammer Fantasy. I saw this and it, yeah, I saw this. Yeah, and I found that in a thrift store. So, and looking online, charity shops, charity shops, and thrift shops, and eBay is really great for stuff like this. And I only bought that for ten dollars. It. Sorry. I, oh yeah, no problem. It's like <laughs> just impressed, just impressed on how cheap that is. Well, well, some wow. It wasn't in the. It's not in the best conditions, and somebody has used it like probably years before deciding to give it away. But considering how it is, I think that's a good deal. And considering how online, like a good version of this core rubo could be like in the hundreds, I think I have good. I think I made a good deal on it. I think I did. I think you do too. Now, I think we have reached a good point where I can ask actually some questions that were that was asked of us. If that's good, yes, yeah, sure. Sir so Thane, I'm going to bring up the questions. What is it that you like most about the hobby? What is your favorite part of it? Lore, minis, games, etc. Uh, I. <laughs> I like the lore aspect of the hobby, but I, I, it depends what mood you're in. Like, Warhammer's great if you've got shit mental health. Like, like I'm not so much suffering with my mental health now, but when I was, Warhammer's excellent. You can, so if you're feeling depressed or anxious or, or just sad you can, you know, pick your models up and then go so uh, go sit at a table and just paint quietly for like an hour. Uh if you if you want to hang out with your friends, uh you can invite them to the Warhammer game. Or sometimes you don't even need to invite your friends. You can organize a, a random game with well, random people mm-hmm. at your local friendly game shop and you can have a game there. Uh, the law, as long as Matt Ward doesn't touch any aspect of the law ever again, is mostly good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, well, why? I, oh, sorry. Go on. Sorry, we're stuttering over each other. Oh, no. Oh, no, I'm sorry. But um, what I would say is that the models are beautiful, definitely. And I think that's something that is should be front and center of what is Warhammer. Yet I find that if it wasn't for like the token-esque universe and this huge library of books I don't think Warhammer would have such an impact on me when I was getting into it for the first time because the models are pretty the models are pretty but the universe is like a shot of vodka the books, the amount of books like the Horus Heresy how many books are there Uh, 56 yeah great 56 books (laughs) read for uh, you don't have to read for every single one, though. That's the thing. And that's sort of the joy of Warhammer, is that if you pick up a, say, Chaos Faction and you just want to learn about that Chaos Faction, then you can. Mm-hmm. don't need to know everything else. You don't need to know every other Legion known to man. If you if you just want to go, right, I just want to, not, I just want to learn a little bit about Night Lords, then you can. Or if you play Imperial Guard, you can... I read about the Fall of Terror or Gaunt's Ghosts or Ka- or Cassius Kane or Caffius Kane. Caf- yeah, Caffius Kane. Hi, Kai, Kai, Kane. Heroes of Imperium. 
<laughs> <That's>... <laughs> yeah, but uh, that is my opinion. I That's my answer to the question. If it weren't for the universe, I don't think I'd be into Warhammer that much. But definitely the malls are cool. And I'm glad that Warhammer has a good amount of accessibility. Yeah, where you can... ma- I... Yeah. Yeah, it does. I... I... Though the models look nice, there's something about like the old janky, n- like nineteen ninety five style models. I just love like the old Chaos Marines, where they just got like little stumpy legs and like a giant knife and just tiny bolter. <laughs> there's just something rather silly about that. Yeah, when I was reading through the fourth edition codices for forty k, it's pretty interesting to see like the journey that these models took from how they were back then to how they are now. It's actually quite interesting. Unless you're an Eldar player, in which it's case the same thing. that journey <laughs> that journey's still on the same. It's not even begun. It's just broken down at the first hurdle. Though, I have a question for you. Do you think Eldar might get an update considering how in this edition we've seen Orcs get an update and Necrons get an update? Well, I honestly think they do. Like, we got brand new Swartis, even more Swartis for this edition. We got uh, a huge wave of Necrons. We got a huge wave of Orcs. And considering that all these Guardsmen stuff that we're getting, I honestly think that, yeah, we will get something for the Craft Holders. Like, maybe we, we will get something like New Guardians or Dire Avengers, stuff like that. And, like, we got Plastic Helm. believe for the Grey Knights. It's, I was about to say, hopefully for the Grey Knights, there'll be a baby, like, new designs on the baby carrier. Yeah, that uh, thing is still kind of like, awkward to see. I like the baby carriers. Mm-hmm. Anyway, go on. Sorry, I interrupted you there. How very, how rude of me. Oh, no, no problem. But uh, considering how in 8th edition, considering how we got Plastic Howling Banshees, I think it's a good indication that, so I think for ninth edition, yeah, we will get something for these space elves. Maybe, but I do. I do hope that. But the question of it being, is it going to be like a huge new wave, like the Oryx or Necrons? Well, I don't know. But all I know is that we'll just have to wait and see and be patient. Though I do have an idea for what they could do for one of these, for a mall for a craft folder. I'm thinking for the Avatar of a Cain, they definitely need to make the. They definitely need to make them like the size of a demon prince. Or the size of a greater demon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, make him this like towering avatar of fire, multiple arms. I think that'd be something cool to see. That would. Yeah, I agree with you there. That would be really cool. It'd be, that would be a pain in the ass to build and paint, but if somebody has the skills to make it look as well, it, to be fair, even if you're a shit painter like myself, uh, you can still make models look decent. Mm-hmm. Don't need to like have the most fanciest of techniques or like an airbrush. You can if you if you just want to paint some like stupid bright neon pink tyranids, then you can. And I've seen them on battle, and they look amazing. <laughs> it's like it's just two sorts of paint. I forgot what the paints are, but it's like pink and then a pink highlight, and they just look bright as possible. So cool. Sorry, I should ramble. Oh, no, no problem, man. I always ramble. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, moving on with some of these questions, I think. Uh, which is your favorite faction and why? Mm. Mm. <laughs> I can't pick. <laughs> I, I have. I, mm, I can't pick. Can you go first? I'm trying to figure out which one's my favorite. I honestly don't know. It's like, you would think it would be Space Marines because of my avatar, but when, ever since I expanded into more of the factions, I honestly don't know. It's like, I like the Tyranids, the Imperial Guard. I don't think I can answer this one, but if I were to give a cheap answer, yeah, it would be all the factions, because if just one faction wasn't there, I don't think the clockwork of 4AK would be the same. Yeah, I I agree with you. Yeah, I just agree with you. I can't pick. I mean, the faction that I probably spend the most time with is Grey Knights, but that's just because my uh, the image 
of every single unit in your army just shouting smites at people is hilarious. It's something. It's just big. It's just like the silly imagery that I like in Warhammer that attracts me to a legion or like an army. But the thing is, in Warhammer, every single army in Warhammer is a big silly army. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, all of them up from Tau. <laughs> I guess that's that's the joke, isn't it? Tau. Oh, I like Tau. Tau Come like on. God all, uh, no. Uh, Tau, uh, Tau or Tau. If you like them, cool. If you don't, that's all right. Well, I think Ace Workshop long, has... Oh, sorry. As, at least Matt Ward didn't touch the Tau. <laughs> Though I think you'll like that's- the... Oh, sorry. I think you'll like the Phil Kelly books from like Farsight and War of Secrets. I think you'll like those books. I need to read. Yeah, I I need to read those books. There's so many books I need to read. Though, if you don't have time to read, I think you if you know the Black Library. App, I know. Right? There's like, uh, yes, there's like a billion audio books that you can listen to. But I, but I prefer reading because I like having the characters' voices in my head. Like, you know, when you read and you can imagine how they would sound. It's like, yeah, I, I think that way too. It's just that with me during working on my both apprenticeship and working on YouTube channel, I don't have much time or energy to, you know, sit down and read as I used to. But what I do have time yeah. is walks. And because I, and because I walk so much, I'm like, well, why don't I listen to a nice book as I'm walking? And that's where the Black Library books came in. Yeah, that works. Mm-hmm. You know, off topic though. Where, ever since we're talking about Grey Knights, if Caldor Drago were to get a new model, what would you like his model to be? Something like like th- this is not a question, but this is something that I'm asking you. I, Cal- I kind of want Calcador Drago to. The way I would like him to come back is that Mortarian manages to capture capture him, torture him, and Drago somehow manages to escape through the warp, but Drago comes out all mutated and twisted. Mm. But he's still very loyal. And the, I I would kind of like to see Drago like really sort of twisted by the warp. And I would like his shield to I don't know. I I would like his shield to be bigger. Mm-hmm. Um, so he has like a bigger shield, and I kind of would like to. I, I don't know why, but the image of Calcador Drago using his uh, shield as like a hoverboard mm-hmm. can't be cool. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, he can move fast. How? Shield, surfboard time. Woo! <laughs> no. Um... Yeah, considering how. Considering where he is, that does sound realistic of a face for him. You know, having his armor looking warped and all that. Not like chaos space being warped, like with spikes and all that, but looking as if his armor was like liquefied and shaped differently. If you see what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Warped. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Or like his armor to have like a pink sort of goo everywhere. Yeah. Or like warp flames coming out of it or something. Yeah, definitely. And maybe his base model will have like demons from all the four gods, from like maybe we see the remains of a corn demon, Nurgle, Zinch, Slanesh. I think oh, that'd be that would be cool. That would be cool if he come back with like an even bigger because his sword's called the Titan Sword. And though it's a really good weapon, I think that it needs to be buffed really. It needs to have like two modes. One where it, in- where it ignores invulnerable saves, and the other one where you can make um, uh, D6 attacks with each attack. It's because the sword itself is like really powerful. Because it's the Titan Sword. I mean, <laughs> maybe be something like the sword that Guts uses from Berserk. Something like that. The only thing I know about Berserk is that bloody horse. <laughs> That's all I know, <laughs> is that horse. Oh, the infamous horse scene, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. I know. Yeah, Berserk can be quite uncomfortable if you don't have a thick skin or something like that. 
It's, it, I don't mind manga at all. I don't. I I quite like Junieto's uh, Spiral series. It's called Yumisaki, I think. Mm. But basically, it's like, oh yeah, there's a spiral, and it basically melts everybody's face or like contorts everyone. Mm. And it's like otherworldly Lovecraft in horror. Good luck. Though uh, I think we rambled on for a bit uh if i could continue yeah. on with the questions <laughs> sure sorry i rambled about junior too. oh no 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 problem no problem um if you got the chance to release a new black library book what would it be about and what changes would you add to the lore in it Ooh, i okay i would write from from like perspective of a of like a guardsman he's like really old at this point he's like in his 60s and well that's not he's it's old in the perspective of like a regular guardsman in warhammer okay that that, that makes sense I mean, 60 nowadays isn't old but in warhammer if you live to be 60 that's old yeah Makes sense. But uh, go on. Um, so, yeah, in this story, I would like this guardsman, 60 years old, to finally meet a space marine. And he and like he accidentally gets like roped in to say, I don't know, he like shoot, uh, fights alongside with, I don't know, like uh, Blood Angels or the Black Templars or something. Uh, and as he pops alongside, he sort of sees uh, the Black Templars shooting at Ogrens and stuff because the mutants saw the Blood Angels fall to the uh, Black Rage or the or the Red Burst. Mm. So he starts questioning uh, the loyalty of Space Marines and stuff. I think that would be I think that would be quite interesting to write about. That actually would be interesting and. That actually does sound like a cool little story that could happen. Yeah. Yeah. As for like uh, changes to the law, I would make sure that Yarrick will. I, I would like the idea that Yarrick just keeps living even in this day and age. So, and so at this point, he'd be like 4,000 years old or something. And the only reason he's alive is because orcs believe him to be alive. <laughs> he's probably so old that he has to be like attached to a wheelchair and a whole bunch of machinery at this point. No, like the orcs still think that he can use the claw and stuff, so he oh, yeah. just claw so he just uses the claw as like a crutch and he's like, Orcs I'm coming for you. <laughs> yeah, it's been orcs. a long time since Armageddon, so I, I would like to see Commissar Yarrick fight uh, the new Gaz Gulfrucker. Yes, he needs and, he needs a new uh, model. Yarrick. Oh, I some question, but can regular guardsmen be put inside like I know they can be put inside like a penance engine, uh, but can they be put inside a dreadnought or the equivalent of a dreadnought? So I guess that's a penance engine. Well, from what I understand, it's like there is no, like, dreadnoughts within the Imperial Guard in the same way that Space Marines would. Um, uh, I know there's the Penance Engine. That is sort that sisters have, where if you're a heretic, then you just... I would kind of like the idea that Yarrick gets really injured by the new Gazgel Fraka. So Yarrick openly volunteers himself to be shoved inside a Penance Engine just so he can have another crack at <laughs> That'd be so cool. It'd be like a mix between a killer can and a penance engine, and you just see Yarrick's, like, little old head, like, yeah, just, gas girl, come back here. <laughs> yeah, they'll get it, claw your face off. I don't know about that, because penance engines is meant for, like, I don't even think that's something that even sororities themselves can, like, willfully, you know, part, uh, you know, volunteer to be strapped to because it's more like you've done something it's wrong. It's punishment. And- yeah. But what I'm trying to say is that Yarrick be- like feeling completely like he failed the Imperium by not killing oh, Gaskell yeah, okay. Cracker. He- he's like a massive armored, you know, uh, big 
green orc war boss at this point. Mm. He volunteers to be shoved into the penance engine as punishment. Oh, actually, However, that makes sense. Like every other, so like every other imperial guardsman tries to talk him out of it, and he's like, "No, I've failed my duty." So he just goes after uh, Gus Skull while in the penance engine. But the penance engine is ever so slightly modified, where it's not torturous for him. That's actually that does actually <laughs> make sense, actually, and that could be something that cool. Be to see. So cool. Just, just see like Garrick return to Gazgol in the penance engine and just Gazgo going, I thought you died. Nope. <laughs> but, the que- yeah, but the question is, I thought you died. I thought Space Wolf caught your head off. Uh, just Gazgol and Garrick just awkwardly look at each other and go, I thought you died. That, that <laughs> would be fun to see. Point eight. They just point at each other, it's like, I thought you died now, I thought you died. That oh. would be fun. Well then. <laughs> uh, there's one more idea that I have for like a law uh, that I would put inside the law. Uh, this can be edited out or something, I don't know. But, but, this, but the idea that I have is like uh, Tusker the Demon Killer oh, comes yeah. out of the as like a corn champion, hmm. and Khan the Betrayer gets really pissed off with corn for basically uh, choosing a new champion. So, so him and so Khan the Khan the Betrayer and Tusker the Demon Killer sort of have to like work together, but both hate each other because it's like I'm the chosen champion of corn. No, I am. No, I am. You know that does that sound be- that does sound awesome, <laughs> and I think that would also actually be cool to see in both like the universe and maybe like a tabletop model. Because I can imagine like this guy being like a warped version of an orc, like having like these Cornish sort of horns. Maybe there's some wings growing out of his back. A demonified orc, basically, and maybe yeah. he, maybe he's I'm not. Like- Maybe he's not really, maybe he's not really corrupted by the warp, but he thinks he's corrupted by the warp. And because of that, that's why he looks so demonic looking. That's what I think. Or even better, uh, Tusker the Demon Killer, uh, escapes from the warp after like getting killed and killing forever. He's like the size of 12 planets or something, but he sets up a new planet, uh, near like an orc out. Sort of like he sets up a new planet, but all the orcs believe that's uh, Gork and Mork. So, like, his soul's split in two, so he's, like, the embodiment of Gork and Mork. That would be fun. <laughs> that would be interesting to uh, experiment with, I think. <laughs> just just two planet-sized orcs flying through space, punching each other in the face. <laughs> it's like the Imperium shits itself. Meanwhile, all the orcs are going, oh, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> What's this? It's heaven. Punch. <laughs> that, that, that idea is so ridiculous that it works for a faction uh, like the Oryx. It's so ridiculous. I love it. Or, or instead of escaping from the warp, the uh, Tusk of the Demon Killer sets up his own little realm in the warp, where the Orcs use that as like a war, as like a webway. Where basically Tusker the Demon Killer grabs hold of an orc ship and just flings it through the warp at such a speed that that no demon can cling onto it. <laughs> That's it's just, Im- it's just the image of like orc navigators going here. Where are we going? We don't need roads. So they just zoom across the warp. Demons are like, you know, getting nearer to the orc ship, but in, but they accidentally stumble upon Tusker the Demon Killer's realm. So he just grabs up his ship and goes, don't worry lads, I got ya. I love that. I love that. It's so orcish. It's... Games Workshop, do something like that, because that idea is awesome. Oh, the idea of, like, the orcs no longer using uh, warp travel, but instead being launched by by Tusker the Demon Killer and his never-ending horde of orcs. Because remember, every time an orc dies, spores happen, so so it'd be like a a horde of planet-sized orcs just lobbing other orcs through the webway. Uh, Through the web... No, not the webway, through the warp. (laughs) 
The WAP. It's WAP. It's W A A A R P. The WAP. The WAP. And oh, Gaz Girl, I, I like awesome. the idea that I like the idea that Gaz Girl Cracker meets Tusker the Demon Killer and his giant orcs, and and all the orcs look at him and go, "Ah, you're the prophet of Gork and Mork." We've been hearing so much, so they lift him up away from his ship. And they go, and they basically go all that phrase, the prophet of Gork and Mork, Gaskell feeling like all the war, you know, war energy. So he's like preparing like this almighty war. And then Tusker the demon killer lobs him at, at like a nearest imperial planet with, with basically, <laughs> they've basically supercharged Gaskell Crocker with like a bunch of weird psychic shenanigans and the war. <laughs> So Gazgill takes down an entire planet by himself. I love your ideas, man. You should definitely work for Games Workshop on this stuff because this is golden. I just like the idea, though, of like, oh, there's so much potential there now. It's like the Eldar accidentally get all lost in the webway. And or like the Necrons traveling through their own webway, and Tusker the Demon Killer sees this, so he just reaches his hand in and goes, "Hello, lads!" Lifts up a bunch of Necrons and flings them randomly around the place. I like, love it. Boom, 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 boom. You have the webway, you have the warp, and now you have the warp. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> The, oh, dude! You can like like the warp even works for like space marines as well, or like imperial guardsmen. The reason this happens is because Tusker the Demon Killer, depending how hard he throws stuff, he's still killing things. So because of this time we, with corn, he's like, oh, I'll still kill things, but the umies and space umies and and my orcs still get there on time. So it's a win-win. So he just keeps lobbing everyone different directions. <laughs> It's like, yep. This is awesome, man. I love your ideas. I love it. I love it. Oh, I'm, this needs to happen now. Oh. Have the old version of the webway called the WAP. I love that idea. <laughs> it's It works. It works so well. Uh, basically, Corn is that impressed with Tusker the Demon Killer that he lets Tusker the Demon Killer self up his own realm. As like a thank you for your service. <laughs> that yeah. could work. It would work. That it's could like work. A, a, yeah. and considering that and, it, and with the context that these are orcs, it works. Uh, it, it honestly does work for something like 40k. It's ridiculous that it works. You can even make that work on the tabletop. Maybe a uh, warp deployment. Yeah, warp deployment. Roll one d six uh, near an enemy unit. You spawn that, that many inches away. However, or if you roll anything but a six, you take D3 mortal wounds. Or maybe something like warp boys, <laughs> like, like orc <laughs> boys that are kind of like the weird boys, right? But they have the, they have the, uh, demon killer powers, but, but they call it warp boys. <laughs> That'd be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Just the Grey Knights see them, it's like, oh, what do we do? I don't know. <laughs> uh, just the Grey Knight expedition falls into the wall, and they accidentally meet the warp. It's like, how do we shut this down? You don't hear me! <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Though, if I could take the opportunity to answer the question for what kind of library yes. book I would like to see, well... I think what would be interesting is that what if we got to see the perspective of a gene stealer? Like, I remember reading this sort of story once upon a time about the thing. I'm not sure if you've seen the film. Yes, I've seen the thing. Yeah, so I love it. Basically, there's this sort of story called the things where we see the alien's perspective, where we see him reconciling like how he was on other planets and how he finds humans strange on how they're not able to change their bodies like he can so what i think will be interesting is that maybe there's this short story maybe i could write this where we see a gene stealer and how he sees humanity and how he's in for, and how he's invading like a hive world and stuff like that how people are flocking to him after they've been contaminated by his genes you see where i'm trying to go at yeah, that 
I like that idea. That's really cool, actually. Yeah, but here's the and then and then in the final, I've got the idea for like the final moments. Uh, go on. No, 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 tell me your ideas. Go on. Uh, okay, so for the final moments, uh, is this Gene Steeler like a regular one, or is he part of the cult? Is he like a Gene Steeler cultist or a regular Gene Steeler? Well, of how Gene Steeler cults work is that it will take one Gene Steeler to go down to a planet and that Gene Stealer himself would create the Gene Stealer cult. It's just that through years, the Gene Stealer cult of the people will see him as like a prophet and he will evolve into the patriarch. So oh. the Gene Stealer oh, is... Sorry, I was always on clear on that. Oh yeah, no problem, bum. Basically, the Gene Stealer of a Gene Stealer cult would basically be the same from a Tyranid High Fleet, but... It depends if we're talking about the patriarch or just the normal gene stealer, but you could say it'd be the same thing. Because I'm, because the ending of this is like the gene stealer's like, I did my job, and now I get to go home, and he sees the tyranny time ship, but he realizes that it's not stopping to pick him up. In fact, it's heading directly for the planet with its mouth wide open. Well, how- when he realizes... That he's going to get eaten by the Tyranid and absorbed as biomass. Well, of how it works is that when t- when these are sorry, sorry, um, uh, of how it would work is that when a high fleet arrives to a planet that the Gene Stiller has infiltrated, it will basically rejoin the high fleet as oh, as thought, as a patriarch. I thought the Tyranid. Okay, I I just for the Tyranid time ship goes. Ah, oh, well done. Um. Oh. <laughs> um, well, well, the Gene Star cults themselves, like the actual people, they will be absorbed by the High Fleet. So, okay, maybe there will be something like a loot. Maybe there's like a character that's like an admirer of this patriarch, and he's like, "Hey, where are you going? Wait, why are they approaching us? Why are they eating my legs off?" And but in the patriarch's mind, he just doesn't care because. Maybe throughout the whole book, he makes it clear that he doesn't care about humanity. But the cult themselves, they talk themselves out of what he's saying. It's like, no, he doesn't really believe this. He just wants us to be better worshippers. But at the end, it was all for naught. You see what I'm trying to go at? Yes, I do. I like that. I really do. So cool. And uh, here's actual more stuff about the Gene Stealer lore. Um, you know the Brood Lord, right? Yes. So basically, it's been theorized that the Brood Lord is actually the Patriarch, but the Patriarch has evolved into the Brood Lord because the Brood Lord is basically the it's his final form. <laughs> it is his final <laughs> form. Yeah, it's basically like the commander of the regular Gene Stealer army that the Tyranids would use on, say, the battlefield. I like that. Is that like a theory, or is that like an actual thing that happens? Does it make sense? Well, Ramilis has actually made a video about this sort of theory, and looking into it, it would make sense, because if we were to compare the Broodlord to the Patriarch, they do have the same base, or the same model design of how they're positioned and all that. So it wouldn't be surprise yeah. me if the Broodlord is actually just the evolved version of the Patriarch. It would make sense. I, lo- I like that. <laughs> if you could erase one faction from the Saint of 4AK, which would it be, and why is it the Tau? Desky, you are wrong. <laughs> this is from Desky on Twitter. It's like, no, you are wrong. The Tau do not need to be erased. or just a jealous fangirl. Desky. <laughs> um, the one that I would erase, uh, that, that one's simple. Probably the ah, oh, what's the regiment called? They use that. Uh, uh, it's a guardsman regiment, but I don't know actually. I wouldn't, I wouldn't erase them. Uh, they just need an update. They're the Italian guard. Oh, the Talarn. I know yes. what you're talking about. Just... Yes, I would. No, I wouldn't erase. No, the one I would uh, get rid of would be the Iron Hands. Yeah, why is that? Uh, because it makes sense if the Iron Hands either defected to Chaos, 
or if they got wiped out because the Iron Hands of ever since Manius Ferius basically got yeeted by Fulgrim, uh, the Iron Hands went a bit batshit insane for a while, and they are still batshit insane. They they aren't exactly the most trustworthy. They think all flesh is weak and stuff, and but they're the loyalists. It's easy to see why the Iron Hands would be eradicated rather quickly, if not by, or if not eradicated, at least turn traitor. I can see the logic behind that, actually. I, I can see that why. But then again, what Space Marine chapter isn't crazy? Um, oh, that one's probably the Salamanders? Or even the Blood Angels, or borderline vampires. The, the Salamanders aren't crazy. They, they're just... No, hang on. I know the chat. I know the subchapter of the Salamanders that aren't crazy. They're, they're like a seafaring chapter. They're called the Deep Kraken. Oh, I heard, I heard about that. They're so cool. And I and if I ever start another Space Marine army, uh, I would base it on them, and I would give all of them harpoons, but convert them so they're like regular bolters, but with a harpoon yeah. thing on the bottom. Yeah, I because, heard about them because they just. Yeah, they they just they're just seafaring and they just they don't really fly anywhere. It's like, yep, we live on an ocean world. Time to purge it of like giant whales or something, or giant Cthulhu monsters, something like that. Pretty much Cthulhu. Yeah, it's like, oh look, look a giant Cthulhu monster. Time to stab it in the face. A giant so hentai monster. monster. Oh no! A giant don't hentai say monster. That about. The thing is, though, because they're salamanders, it means that they have flame weapons. Now, I'm no scientist, and I know Warhammer 40k is not the most realistic setting, but can we agree that fire against water isn't exactly a good mix? Unle but here's the thing, the flamers are made of Prometheum, and to my knowledge, Prometheum is like a type of oil. So, you can technically burn water with because technically you can't set water on fire but it but but then again is it really war on that's on fire or is it the oil probably just the oil because <laughs> otherwise the water planet wouldn't exist because there were salamander subchapters so they would just burn the entire thing by now or they'll probably flood the whole ocean with oil <laughs> oh no then basically the US government Give us oil. We need oil. Or that uh, infamous uh, oil spill that happens near the Mexico border. If you if you've heard about that, <laughs> the BP oil spill. <laughs> and the guys behind. They're, they're not salamanders. They're the BP Space Marines. <laughs> the time to kill the pelicans. The oh. But do you know? Do you know that oil spill that happened near Mexico? The uh, huge, you know, fire that's going on. Heard yes, about that? Yes. That that does. Uh, hopefully, no one got hurt. But that would be something the salamanders would probably do. That's like that's like the salamanders' final goal, isn't it? Just create an entire planet of. Like, they did, didn't they? It's called the Prometheum Sun. They basically set fire to an entire planet. Yeah, um, I heard something about that. I had that a soon. child on it. Yes. Oh, ch I heard something about that, but I um, don't. I can't give a huge opinion on it on something I don't know about. So, but I have heard about the it. The Prometheum Sun's cool. <laughs> uh, Vulcan's a nice Primark. He just set fire to a child. Is all. That sounds bad, but when you compare it to like the other Primarchs. Setting fire to an elder child isn't as bad as some of the other shit that the other prime hearts do. Looking at you, Conrad Kurz, what do you do? Oh, I just skin the old person here and there. No, Angron, you can't. You can't slay an entire planet. The Emperor forbids it. Axe goes. <laughs> 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 Axe goes. <laughs> Nail goes. Brr. Yeah. That's the 
That's the level now we're on. It's just memes. Oh, come on. Memes are fun. Memes, memes are fun. Don't take life so seriously. You'll never make it out of it alive. <laughs> oh, dear. But you know what? I want to go back Fair to wrong. Dusk. I want to go back to Dusky and what he says about the Tao. I'm pretty sure she'll hear about this, but honestly, she reminds me of, you know, that, you know, that fangirl from, ah, uh, I, I don't know what this movie's called, but it's, it's a Stephen King movie where as a famous author, he got. Misery. Yes, it reminds misery me of misery dispels. sometimes. It reminds me of misery the sometimes. It's a fan movie. I've never heard misery be described as the fan movie. <laughs> well, he's a huge fan. fan. Well, he's a huge oh, fan. Famous horror film, the fan movie. Well, oh, look, can we watch the car film? What film is that? You know, the one with the car. Well, listen, he's a fan of the authors, and he doesn't Steve like the... Christine, yes. How about the hotel movie? Well, well listen, well, <laughs> listen, phone, sorry. well, listen, it's like, she's a huge fan of the author, she, she doesn't like how he finished the series, and like a fangirl, she gets so angry that she kidnaps him and wants him to write her version of the ending. That's something that's, that's something a fangirl would do. Oh, like really obsessive fangirls. I I I've, I saw a comment uh, about about Matt Ward once ages ago, and it was basically the gif from Misery of like Annie Wilkes smashing the guy's legs in with a sledgehammer, and the comment underneath was like, "This is what I would do to Matt Ward if he touches Ultramarines again." It's just like Jesus. <laughs> No, that's, that's something, that does sound something Dusky would do if Gilman and Euphrain weren't an actual, weren't in an actual relationship in the Saints. He's like, no, this is my version. I want to go this way. Yeah, but Gilman can't take off the armor of fate. So even if it was like as lewd as possible, Gilman can't take off his armor. Though it has been hinted in like the Dark Imperium books that he is actually healing from the huge, you know, scar from his neck. So it's a possibility. Uh, of course he is. Of course he is. But I'm pretty sure Dusk... Of fucking course he is. Because it's bloody Gilliman. Didn't Matt Ward come into, like, the writing team one day and, like, posed as someone else that was like, hey, you guys, you know how, like, Fulgrim's Poison the Blade is, like, the most deadliest thing known to man, Yeah. Well, let's have Gilliman he get healed from that. Well, oh, no, you mean no. With <laughs> no, he's not healing from it, but it's like every time he takes it off, it like gushes out all the blood. And it's not like instant or anything like that. It's a very slow process. And it's probably something that's going to happen anytime soon. Yet it's hinted that it could be getting better, but it's not going to happen like in a lifetime or anything like that. That's good. I'm glad. And but then as soon. As soon as this podcast episode comes out, the very next day will be like Matt Ward's reintroduced into writing the Ultramarines. <laughs> though, though, again, I think, yeah, I've rented much a little bit about Desuke, but we're good friends, and she'll probably have a good laugh at this episode. Probably. We like to go back and forth with this kind of humor. It's a, we're all good. Yeah. Though, uh, with everything said and done, I think we're at a good point where I think we've reached the end of the show. End of the show. Is there, right. is there anything you'd like to say before we call in? I'm currently writing a Warhammer story. That's all I want to say. Yeah, yeah. And I heard subscribe that. To, yes, and subscribe to me if you want to. I very rarely post things. And follow me on stuff. I'll definitely have the link to your stuff in the description down below this video. Cool. But with everything said and done, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all again next week with a brand new video. And thank you, Synergy, for coming on to the show. You're very welcome. <laughs>